continuing on with our geology notes. So this is page four of four, so it's the last page. So we started with the, uh, the first page was geology notes, but I don't have in front of me for some reason. And then we did the plate boundaries, and then more plate boundaries and hotspot volcanoes. And then now we're on the rock cycle. Okay, so <clears throat> the rock cycle is pretty quick and easy. There's not a ton to write in here. We're gonna label the parts of the rock cycle first. The rock cycle is, we have three types of rocks and they can transform into other types of rocks. So any kind of rocks that are made from um, volcanic activity, so basically solidified magma, is called igneous. And so let's draw our magma in here, our color in our magma, to help you put some color in these diagrams. This whole part here is actually um, magma as well. Okay, the next um, item to talk about is sedimentary. So we have weathering that happens. So weathering of rocks, so when this igneous rocks starts to, um, have rain on it or wind or and, and um, it breaks into littler pieces. The littler pieces sort of run off with water and then they can get deposited and form um, into um, sedimentary rock. So they layer in sediment. So anytime you have a layered rock, it's probably sedimentary. But heat and pressure can turn it into metamorphic, and so those layers could be an old sedimentary rock, but it's actually metamorphic. So this is sedimentary. So we have weathering and then deposition into layers. So I'm gonna write deposition here. That's a T, I know it's hard to see, but that's deposition with a T in here. And so sedimentary rock has layers in it. This picture doesn't show layers very much, but it's layered. All right, and then we have heat and pressure. Spell pressure wrong, let's spell it correctly. Pressure can turn sedimentary rock into metamorphic. Now, this kind of looks like it's underground, but it doesn't have to be underground. Um, most of the time it is because of the pressure underground. Um, but so, yeah, this is actually a, a more realistic picture because some of these rocks, um, when they're under the surface, um, they do get that heat and pressure more. And so they can actually melt and they can turn into igneous rock here. So we have igneous twice because igneous can come um, out of underground and the magma comes up like in a volcano. And this particular type of igneous is called extrusive. Um, you don't have to know that for this class. This type of igneous rock is called intrusive because it's made out of metamorphic rock. All right, so the Metamorphic rock goes through melting to turn back into igneous. So heat and pressure, and if the, the plates and the earthquakes move and, and this metamorphic rock ends up getting close to a heat source, it can melt and then it can cool and crystallize into igneous rock. But this is not the full 
way that it can be done because sedimentary rock can also turn into igneous rock when it's melted. So if sedimentary rock also gets close to uh, metamorphic, I'm sorry, if sedimentary rock gets close to the magma, it can also um, melt and become, and then cool and become igneous rock. So we can see um, a better diagram here. The same thing also metamorphic rock can with weathering and deposition also turn into sedimentary rock. So this is a better diagram here showing you all of the interactions. So um, the first one here, let's go ahead and label igneous. And then we have our next kind, which is sedimentary. Sedimentary rock. So it's a, that's an ENT right there. And then down here is metamorphic. Okay, so you can see by this diagram that they can all turn into each other. Igneous can turn into metamorphic and over this way can turn into sedimentary. And same thing here, metamorphic can be sedimentary this way, can be igneous that way. Okay, so um, things get turned into sedimentary walk, rock through weathering. Now up here, I just put weathering and deposition. I didn't put all of it down, but you have erosion as well in there, and then compaction and cementation, um, and that's part of deposition. So they're just more precise terms. So weathering, erosion, compaction, and cementation are uh, like cement. Those are the kind of more technical terms. And then the same thing happens here as here. So I'm going to put a little star. That also occurs here. So we don't need to rewrite it. Okay, sedimentary can turn into igneous through melting and cooling and crystallization. Okay. And that also occurs here, melting and crystallization. So metamorphic can turn into igneous through melting, sedimentary, same thing. And then we have here heat and pressure turns things into igneous rock. Okay, so we have all of the paths here. If, if this bothers you that this is blank, you can go ahead and copy this into this. Just a couple of little things to understand about the rock cycle and how it forms soil. So when we learn about soil in our class, there's a couple of little things to um, understand about um, soil. So let's talk about igneous rock first. Um, volcanic activity creates very fertile soil. So soil over igneous rock. So you will learn that soil is formed through the weathering of rock and decomposition of living things. And when it's formed over igneous rock, it has um, higher fertility. And you're gonna learn about something called nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So these are our main nutrients in soil, NPK. You'll learn a lot more about those um, in chapter nine. And it has um, uh, a lower pH. which means it's more acidic. Okay, this was actually on the AP test last year about soil formation over different types of rock. The next one I wanna talk about is sedimentary rock. So down here with sedimentary, we're gonna write some things in here. 
One type of sedimentary rock is limestone. So an example of sedimentary rock is limestone, and that's a very common sedimentary rock. And so soils formed um, over limestone, so the limestone weathers and creates soil, and it takes decades to, for this to happen, um, equal a, um, a more stable pH because um, limestone, well, limestone is made out of calcium carbonate. So we'll say the calcium carbonate is a buffer. Okay, so limestone is calcium carbonate. And if you remember back to chemistry, a buffer is something that helps prevent changes in pH. So, um, if you have something like acid rain and the acid rain hits this soil that has a lot of calcium carbonate in it, it will resist pH change. That acid rain will be buffered by the calcium carbonate and your pH is unlikely to decrease or decrease very much. So this could lead to a higher um, it, it doesn't really cause a more alkaline um, soil, but it prevents the soil from becoming acidic. All right, so that's the last little part of the rock cycle. And when we study soil, those things will go over a little bit more. And uh, that's it for geology.